other than uh, Sabrina? Are there any other questions? So the metric is okay ke? So the metric is okay ke? Okay. Okay je. Tak pernah tak okay? Kan? Madam saya nak tanya. Pasal, okay. uh, pasal tutorial tu kalau kita orang hantar, Madam nanti check balik dah hantar kat kita orang balik ke tak? Uh, depends yang mana I pulangkan. I takkan marking semua. Oh, Okay, alright Madam. Thank you. Okay. Dan tak semuanya kena submit. Ha. Okay. Sometimes uh, I tengok lah. Sometimes kalau you buat tak rugi pun. Tapi kalau you need me to check for you, tak ada masalah. You just come over, I'll get it done for you. Okay, thank you madam. Uh, okay. So ada uh, certain, uh, the reason is that sometimes I hanya ambil uh, certain uh, tutorials. Okay, and then I akan pulangkan dekat you. Macam I rasa masa part tu kan, yang the last tutorial tu I mark kan untuk you. Untuk you refer for exam. Yang pukul berapa berapa tu I forward dekat si Adam. Mana si Adam? Kan ha. Ada yang I pulangkan I tanya you boleh tak uh, I share dengan 2A. Lepas tu you kata tak nak. Si ah uh, I still remember. Ha kena ikut kan. Ha. Itulah dia. Dia kata uh, don't, uh, no need madam. I still remember look. <laughs> kan? Ha. Betul kan? Ha. I rasa I bagi kat you masa tu pukul satu pagi ke dua pagi kot uh, tutorial tu. Okay. So uh, So this one adalah lecture one. So I akan go through a bit lah before I will really start. Okay. So basically untuk lecture one kita akan ada building a process. Parties involved and their obligation. So akan ada part one, part two, part three and part four. So the part one kita akan cover building process and parties involved. Part two we have of employer's obligation. Remember I told you about express and uh, Implied. An implied uh, obligation just now. Okay. And then kita ada contractors obligation. And then kita ada employers agent. Remember I told you on behalf of an employer usually there is. Okay. An agent who act on behalf of the employer uh, himself. So kalau dalam uh, traditional Okay, kita panggil dia SSO. Okay, uh, kalau dalam design build kita panggil dia project director. Okay, so those are the parties that involve in construction industry. So if you could see the main uh, character is employer because the employer yang akan okay inform that uh, ataupun uh, that has intention. Okay, to build something, okay, so that dia akan keluarkan duit. So monetary funding is from employer and then they will find the best people, the best contractor, okay, to undertake the project. So what is contractor's obligation? So usually in one contract, in one project, the employer will be contracted with a contractor okay to undertake to complete the specific project and then on behalf of employer so the employer always okay has employers agent ataupun their own agent and then we have to know 
what is the limit of the employer's agent? Boleh tak dia overrule employer? Boleh tak dia overrule contractor? Adakah every single thing contractor buat dia perlu interfere? So we have to know their responsibilities and their obligation. So in traditional contract, we call it superintending officer, SO. In um, design and build, we call them as project director. So kalau you nampak, you buka je kontrak tu, you nampak project director, project director, you mesti dah ada one perception, oh this is a design build contract, not a traditional contract. Okay, so you kena tahu sampai that, that level. Tak boleh macam, oh I'm not sure lah, I don't know which is which. Ha, tak boleh. Okay, alright. And then, okay, building process and parties involved. Okay, kita akan pecahkan kepada kategori the construction industry, the construction uh, uh, categories, features of construction industry, design and construction process, and then forms of construction project procurements as well as project participants. Okay, so what is construction industry? So basically, construction industry, according to part one, section two, CIDB 1994, Act uh, 502, sorry, 520, construction industry is an industry concerning all construction works. So it is an industry concerning all construction works. So what is construction works? So according to the Act, Construction work, okay, involve with installation, construction, renovation, dismantling, repairing work, extension work, maintaining work, alteration work, demolition work, renewal work. Semuanya, all those uh, keywords. Okay, represent construction work. Whenever you see this, you know definitely they are under construction work. Okay, any of the keywords, any of the construction work of, okay, any building type of structure, any civil structure work, any canal, sewerage and pipe works, of any mechanical and electrical work, any soil, earth and water control work. So anything related to this, whatever you have seen in this slide, so basically they are considered as construction work. Okay, so kalau you nampak installation, construction, dismantling, repairing, extend, oh kita nak buat kerja-kerja extension, kita nak buat kerja-kerja maintenance, ah itu adalah part and parcel of construction work. Okay, so what is construction industry? So construction industry according to Town and Country Planning Act 1971, the carrying out of building, engineering, mining or other operations in. So, ada kerja-kerja, okay, nak buat building. Kerja-kerja nak buat, okay, kerja-kerja engineering. Okay, ataupun mining. Mining apa dalam Malay? Mining apa in Malay? Perlombongan. Yes. Uh, thank you, Izzatul Fazlina. Okay, or other operations atau apa-apa operations ataupun operasi ataupun kerja, okay, dalam, in, okay, on, atas, over, okay, contohnya apa tadi? Ada kerja-kerja kabel kan? Electrical and mechanical. Electric cables, over, okay, pipe works, in, the soil. And then, kerja-kerja building, on, okay, or under land. Okay, or the making of material change in the use of any building or other land. So, making of material change in the use of uh, any building or other land means macam kalau you nampak kerja-kerja uh, buat marbles. Okay, marbles datang dari mana? Pernah lalu uh, North South Highway tak? Plus Highway. Pernah lalu tak North uh, Plus Highway? 
nak pergi ke heading towards the other uh, the north tak pernah ke pernah pernah kan kalau along the way dekat Perak tu uh, I'm not mistik uh, is it Tapah ke what Tapah or Ipoh uh, somewhere there you could see uh, macam uh, you know those uh, hills yang being uh, excavated uh, kan pernah tak being disturbed dikeluarkan untuk buat marble. Perasan tak? Sikit-sikit bukit-bukit yang kat tepi-tepi highway tu you nampak makin lama uh, di tarah, di korek, di kacau okay untuk buat marble. Uh, itu pun considered as construction industry. Making of material change in the use of any building or other land. Sebab kalau kita punya marble tu, dia nak buat marble datang daripada that particular tanah. Okay, tapi you akan ubah suai that particular um, material tu kepada material yang lain. Ha, macam buat marble tadi tu lah. Alright. Okay. And then economy and construction. So Malaysian construction market size was valued uh, at USD 17.2 billion in 2022. So basically this is the figure ataupun the data okay from uh, 2022 okay dia uh, valued at USD 17.2 billion and is projected to reach USD 25.81 billion by 2028. So nampak tak? how huge our construction uh, industry is. So construction activities in Malaysia uh, boosted by the increased output for both residential. So ada 22.7% okay uh, cater for residential and then non-residential building 30.7% and then civil engineering 37.4% and special trade activities 9.2%. Uh, So the source of this data coming from the Department of Statistics Malaysia, the Malaysian construction industry is segmented on the basis of sector and construction type. So macam I cakap tadi, it depends on the mining ke, uh, building works ke, and then uh, telecommunication, telecommunication ke, right? Some of the major players of the industry are UEM Group Berhad, YTL Corporation Berhad, IJM Corporation Berhad, Gamuda uh, Berhad, Malaysian Resources Corporation Berhad, MRCB, WCT Holdings Berhad, WCE Holding Berhad, Hock Seng Lee Berhad, Mudajaya Group Berhad, Muhibah Engineering and etc. So kalau you dapat a job uh, dekat all this uh, apa ni stated um, company ataupun uh, dekat uh, this kind of organization. So um, I think you are lucky enough. Okay, so but it's, it's quite hard to penetrate. And then uh, in term of breakdown by key economic sector, the services sector has consistently accounted for more than 80% of all uh, micro, small, medium, okay, entrepreneur. Okay, so sebenarnya Uh, kalau ikutkan dekat Malaysia ni, kita punya um, driver, okay, the Malaysian economic market is driven by yang tadi saya sebut tadi tu, micro, small, medium inter enterprises. Okay, so sebenarnya dekat Malaysia ni banyak yang company kecil-kecil ni yang menolong company yang besar-besar untuk buat kerja. Tapi company yang besar-besar sebenarnya tak banyak. Okay, 80% adalah daripada micro, small, medium uh, enterprises. Kalau uh, untuk yang company besar-besar macam I sebut tadi dekat depan ni, Gamuda and what not kan, very established company ni, dia adalah accounted for 20% saja. So that's why I said just now, if you are able to secure a job dekat any of the companies, okay, these organizations. So basically you are lucky. You can see, please consider yourself lucky. Okay, sebab dia accounted for 20% sahaja. Other than that, itu yang you tengok, most of your seniors, okay, yang uh, yang ada sekarang kerja dekat yang uh, company yang considered as 
micro, small, medium ni lah. Alright? Okay. For the latest 2022 MSME uh, profile, services sector constituted 84.7% uh, amounting 994,350,000. Okay, so nearly 1 million firms lah, 950,000. The construction sector remain to be the second largest contributor at 7.9%. So construction sector ni, dia memberi impact kepada kita punya economic, Malaysian economic, okay, as the second largest contributor at 7.9%. So kalau you tengok daripada uh, apa statistik tu, daripada nearly, nearly 1 million firms yang uh, micro small medium tadi tu, actually kita adalah second largest. Kita contributed dekat 8% which is around 92,000 firms adalah construction ataupun contracting firms. Okay. Meanwhile, about 5.6% of MSME, uh, lebih kurang 65,000 uh, firms were involved in the manufacturing sectors. Okay. Followed by 1.4%, 16,000 firms in the agriculture sector with the remaining of 0.4%, okay, lebih kurang 4K firms in the mining and quarrying sector. So basically, we could say that kalau economic downturn ataupun recession, ekonomi kita tak bagus, so bila ekonomi not so good, so kita punya... Um, construction uh, activities akan berkurangan lah, betul? Okay, so at that time, okay, basically uh, susahlah nak dapat kerja. Kenapa? Sebab construction ni caters for uh, majority of employment in Malaysia. So kalau, okay, orang-orang uh, yang local tak nak kerja, okay, so that's how you nampak dekat all the construction sites sekarang ni dominated by the foreign workers. Okay, sebab all those Malaysian uh, people, lo the locals, uh, they don't really want to be in uh, this sector sebab apa dia kata lah dirty, betul? Uh, difficult, uh, dia tak nak deal with uh, those kind of uh, situation. So, so kerugian lah kepada uh, Malaysia sebab we have to import all those um, foreign workers to cater for the employment yang uh, open dekat uh, construction industry. So basically dekat Malaysia ni tak, jangan cakap tak ada kerja. We have lots of opportunities. It's just that the locals doesn't want get involved. Okay, kenapa? Sebab they have uh, you know, some perceptions on construction industry ni kalau buat macam, you know, tak glamour, uh, dirty, uh, dangerous uh, and difficult, kerja-kerja uh, susah. Okay. So basically, if they took up the uh, employment opportunity by the uh, construction industry, actually we have more than, okay, we have more than employability yang uh, kita boleh offer. Uh, it's just that when there's no takers, so kita terpaksa import lah. Okay, so kalau you tengok majority di mana-mana side dominated by the Indonesian, okay, and uh, Bangladesh uh, ada juga daripada uh, apa, uh, bukan Myanmar satu lagi tu. Okay, uh, apa tah, Myanmar eh? Uh, kalau yang macam ala-ala Myanmar tu. Okay, uh, tapi not definitely not Vietnam lah. Okay. So basically, um, construction industry ni cater for employment unless kalau ada economic recession. Kalau ekonomi kita jatuh, uh, kerajaan pun tak ada duit nak buat infrastruktur yang besar-besar. Lepas tu tak ada banyak sangat tender untuk new development, new construction, new building. So basically, dekat situ you akan nampak lah. Okay, akan ada reduce decrement uh, pada uh, job offers. Okay, so you do apa banyak supaya when you graduated bukannya waktu the recession. Sebab kalau waktu recession, you are going to be in trouble. Kenapa? Sebab job tak banyak. Okay. So features of construction industry adalah very unique. Each are unique. Tak sama antara satu sama lain. 
location tak sama, characters tak sama, design, product, condition, circumstances semuanya adalah berbeza. Okay, so if you're talking about 30 projects, okay, you're talking about 30 different contracts, you're talking about 30 different specification, you're talking about 30 different locality, you're talking about 30 different local authority to deal with. So kalau kita buat projek, okay, dekat mana-mana, we are Govern by the local authority punya uh, requirements. Okay, for example, kalau dekat uh, uh, Syaklam ni, kita govern dengan MSA. So, kalau you nak buat anything on uh, your land dekat Syaklam, you have to go to MBSA to check. Apa requirement by local authority? Boleh buat macam ni ke? Plot ratio nya berapa? Okay, berapa uh, luas uh, jalan belakang uh, yang perlu you sediakan? berapa banyak you perlu kereta uh, untuk uh, rumah uh, kalau you buat rumah yang mewah berapa banyak uh, requirement by the local authority untuk sediakan rumah uh, apa ni low cost uh, you tahu tak requirement okay uh, kalau you sediakan uh, satu development mixed development okay untuk rumah-rumah mewah ni rumah yang lebih exit pada certain certain uh, apa certain certain amount. So basically there is a requirement untuk you sediakan juga okay berapa persen out of the total development itu kepada uh, golongan B40 ataupun yang low cost uh, houses tu. Okay so this is very interesting. So it depends on uh, locality you berada and local authority yang you govern by. Okay so that's why each projects are unique tak sama. Sama juga macam we keep saying dekat dalam class measurement if you are doing measurement, okay, don't ever have a mentality, a mentality that um, ataupun mindset that oh uh, sama je this set of drawing will definitely be the same as the past drawing. Exactly tak. Okay, kalau you are talking about this project, okay, and the other project, you akan tengok mungkin specification yang berbeza, materialnya berbeza and then dari segi depth punya concern. If you're talking about water, um, water adequation, so it depends on you punya uh, public water requirement. So kalau dekat Syah Alam ni kita ada Syabas. Eh Syabas eh dekat Syah Alam. Masih Syabas ke? Masih Syabas ke dekat Syah Alam? Eh semua dah tidur ke? Tak pasti dah meja mungkin indah water. Eh ada pula indah water. Indah water tu untuk uh, uh, ni lah. Sebab dia pandai je. Masa <laughs> cuaca tu tak apa. Super rich. Ha air selangor kan? Ha. Lepas tu kalau dekat Kelantan apa? Kelantan uh, siapa yang govern air? Air Kelantan. Air Kelantan eh? Kalau Penang? Siapa orang Penang? Ha, siapa orang Penang? Atau saya tak tahulah mana saya tak pernah tengok bil air rumah saya. Ha, orang Penang? Ha, betul. Air Selangor. Ha, air, air baru cek. Ha, sebab memang bukan syabas tapi saya tak ingatlah yang baru ni. Okay thank you Adam. Ha, kalau dekat Selangor govern by dia akan bagi tahu you. Okay, untuk pipe, apa jenis pipe yang you perlu guna, berapa kedalaman yang you perlu excavate. So, kalau you pergi Kelantan, different uh, requirement by the uh, air Kelantan tadi. Kalau betul lah, kalau dia tipu air tak tahulah kalau dekat Kelantan memang air Kelantan. Kan dia cakap air Pulau Pinang lah. Betul. Betul. Betul, betul lah. Air Kelantan. Ha, betul lah. Ha, kalau kat Penang? Tak ada orang Penang. Dandan tak, tak mengaku orang Penang. Okay. So basically uh, kena tengoklah eh. Each of unique features of construction ni. Tak ada yang sama. Okay. And then kita ni actually being fragmented ataupun ada fragmentation uh, issues lah uh, dekat kita punya industri ni. Okay whereby setiap uh, projek adalah kompleks. Kenapa kita kata kompleks? Sebab we involve with so many players at one time. 
kita bukan hanya ada employer and kita bukan hanya ada contractor. Kita involved dengan QS. Kita involved dengan architect. We involved with the engineers. We involved with the subcontractors. All other parties, uh, local authorities kita involved. So kita punya uh, construction industry ni actually dia punya chain tu adalah a bit complex. Sebab macam I said tadi, sebab bila sampai dekat local authority berbeza, you involve dengan other uh, parties. Okay, parties di locality tersebut. Bila you pergi buat projek dekat uh, tempat yang lain, okay, you mungkin Okay, daripada company yang sama, dulu dekat projek A, you bekerja dengan arkitek A, uh, engineer A dan juga surveyor A. Okay, bersama dengan locality A. Bila you pindah ke locality B, you mungkin bekerjasama dengan, okay, uh, masih uh, arkitek A tapi engineer C. Okay, locality pun dah C sebab you dah pindah dekat tempat lain. Okay, so it's very complex. Okay, dari segi relationship, you nak manage people, okay, and then one of separated design. So, dah siap satu, that's it. So, you pun uh, disperse to all over places. Uh, pergi pula projek lain, jumpa pula orang lain, okay, one of. And then combine efforts of crafts. So, dia adalah satu building bukannya hanya satu trades yang terlibat, betul? Macam saya cakap tadi, bukan hanya concrete works terlibat. So, you akan combine all uh, craft, okay, concrete wood work, uh, okay, you carpenter, terlibat. Lepas tu ada metal workers. All everything kena work together then only you'll get a building, a complete building. And then various experts involved, okay, like I said tadi ada banyak consultant. And then combined effort and banyak parties involved, fragmented. Okay, so kita ni ada banyak-banyak fragmented, lepas tu kita akan kita combine. Lepas tu pergi pula locality berbeza, jumpa pula consultant lain, jumpa pula locality lain. So it's very difficult lah kita tak bekerja dengan orang yang sama at the same time throughout. Kalau 10 tahun kerja tu 10 tahun lah jumpa orang yang sama. No, we are not like that. Okay, and then design construction process. Okay, kita ada initial stage. Kita ada detail design, kita ada tender stage, kita ada contract stage. So initial stage ini adalah client's briefing, client bagi tahu. Okay, basically I I I want to be uh, I want to build uh, a building, okay, a commercial building. Uh, it has to be an elevated parking, and then uh, uh, and then I nak uh, elevated parking dah. Okay, each of the uh, houses must be in different sizes. So, ada akan ada corner and uh, intermediate. Okay, so they will be uh, sell at uh, different uh, prices. Okay, so dia dah bagi tahu requirement-nya. And then I need some parks on the uh, car park uh, rooftop. And then I need uh, a swimming pool. Okay, uh, size uh, blah 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 blah. Okay. So dia bagi tahu dekat ini stage initial stage ni kepada the architect and all the consultant. So architect ini akan keluarkan dia punya design. Okay, the, uh, all the client client dengan client agent akan check lah. Okay, okay betul tak? You kata you nak this uh, kind of uh, material, this kind of specification, this kind of swimming pool, blah 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 blah. It must be here, it must be there. And then architect and engineer later on akan keluarkan detail design after the initial design, conceptual design agreed by the client. Kalau tak agreed, tak boleh keluar detail design. Okay, so dah keluar detail design. Okay, so dia akan pass. Dah siap lah. Okay, architect buat uh, um, drawing dulu. Dia pass kepada engineer. So engineer kata, okay, hey, you cannot do this because kalau you uh, make it this way, uh, there's no beam can be allocated at this uh, area. So you have to shift a bit, you have to change your, uh, a bit your design. So dah, di, dah uh, discuss among themselves, okay, dah all completed, okay, dia akan pass to, pass over to QS. You lah, dia hantar kat you. So dia kata QS within two weeks, okay, I need a complete BQs prepared. So client kata within two weeks, I give you two weeks only. So you pun buatlah elemental BQ you. So dah letak, okay, uh, yes, um, client, what type of uh, standard form of uh, you need, you prefer to use? So dia, dia patah balik dekat you, dia kata, oh, why not uh, you suggest uh, which is better? 
uh, even if uh, you are a private sector, if you prefer to use PWD, tak ada masalah. Eh? Kalau private sector nak guna JKR standard form pun boleh, tak ada masalah. Kalau dia nak guna PEM form, usually dia use PEM form, boleh juga, tak ada masalah. So basically, uh, you want it to be uh, design built or traditional? So, okay, you suggest. Okay, this is only a normal, don't need a complex uh, design, uh, don't need a complex uh, requirement, just a typical uh, building like uh, the rest. So, kita buat traditional uh, arrangement je lah. Okay, so dia pun kata buat traditional arrangement. So, you pun letaklah standard form of contract, uh, PEM, okay, yang biasa under traditional arrangement. So, dah pergi, dah siap everything. You pergi kepada tender stage, okay, you pergi kepada tender stage, you panggil uh, uh, buka tender, iklankan dekat uh, surat khabar ataupun dekat website. Okay, so ada 100 contractor yang masuk. So contractor, 100 contractor dah masuk, you pun dah evaluate. Okay, uh, dah tutup you evaluate, dapatlah satu contractor, contractor A. So contractor A ini akan bersama-sama you pergi ke contract stage whereby they will be, uh, sorry, uh, the contractor A will be in contract with the employer. So, dia dapat job, awarded with the job. So, dia akan berada pada contract stage bersama-sama dengan client tadi tu. Okay? Right. Uh, so, kalau you look at this, ada uh, riba plan of work. Okay. So, stage A, uh, inception. Task is to establish appointments and requirements. So, kalau you look at this, ini adalah briefing stage ataupun initial stage. So, dia dah buat uh, appointment dengan requirement. So, next dia akan buat feasibility study. So, feasibility study ni dia akan establish technical possibilities dengan specialist. Dia akan check, you you know what, in this uh, area, there's no uh, terrace houses yet. So, why not? Okay, kita cuba buat terrace house, mungkin ada demand on it. And based on uh, market study, the majority of the uh, apa ni, community, uh, they are professionals uh, in professional profession. So, their income is around blah 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 blah. So, kalau you buat terrace house, suits them well. But kalau you buat uh, and then kalau you buat this, oh tak boleh. You cannot propose a uh, 20 story of uh, condominium. Why? Because that is uh, uh, the route for the airplane. Uh, apa ni, daripada airport. So kalau uh, you check visibility study, okay kalau you kena tengok jenis tanah. Kalau tanah itu adalah, the kalau kalau adalah tanah untuk laluan kapal terbang for airplane route. So, you tak boleh buat sampai spesifik uh, tingkat. So, dia dah bagi dekat you requirement, you hanya boleh buat up to 8 tingkat saja. Sebab uh, more than that, nanti kapal terbang tak boleh lalu. Okay, so you dah, dia dah tengok lah income, uh, dia dah buat research, okay majority of the community kata dia nak uh, terrace. So, dia pun uh, buat rumah terrace. So, uh, dia pun outline proposal dekat sini, brief and approach. Okay. So dia dah buat scheme design, dia dah buat detail design dekat sini, dah involve semua dia dah tahu konsep, dia dah tahu material apa nak pakai, apa nak buat, okay, daripada dari segi space, dah ikut alignment, uh, dah align kepada uh, local authority. So dia dah buat detail design, drawing and spec. So dia akan keluarkan uh, complete uh, drawing dengan spec for tender. Lepas tu dia akan keluarkan bill of quantities, okay. So ini uh, semua yang terlibat lah walaupun kita yang buat bill of quantities tapi yang produce uh, drawing itu adalah architect and engineer. So diorang pun akan terlibat sama untuk jawab any queries ataupun any questions from the tenderers. Okay and then tender action, tender process. So tengoklah 2-3 minggu kita keluarkan tender. So dalam masa 3 minggu ada 100 tenderer yang submit balik. And then project planning. Okay, agree on timetable, process and uh, procedure. Saya dah dapat dah, uh, contractor dah dapat dah project. So, kita kena uh, nego balik. Okay, timetable, procedure, schedule dia untuk dia completekan that particular project on time specifically. Uh, okay, as stipulated in the contract. And then operation on site. 
Ha, ini dah bermula lah kerja-kerja construction. Okey bila dah kerja, dah bermula kerja-kerja construction akan ada site miss, meeting, akan ada kerja-kerja supervision and kerja-kerja payment. Okey untuk payment certificate. So ini adalah involvement oleh semua uh, consultant dan juga contractor. Last kali dah siap kita kena hand over. Lepas tu kita kena check balik kita punya defect liability period. So DLP here adalah defect liability period. So walaupun you dah hand over, contractor perlu bertanggungjawab kepada you punya building itu selama kalau DLP period dalam kontrak kata 12 bulan setahun. So if any defects dekat building you, you panggil dia rectify for free. FOC, free of charge. Kalau dekat dalam uh, kontrak itu stipulated that the DLP period is 24 months so 2 tahun. Dalam masa 2 tahun if anything happen to that building, contractor itu kena datang and ratify for free. Okay so that's uh, the reason contract is very important. So dia dah spell out dekat kita. Okay DLP period berapa lama. If ada anything happen during this period so the contractor will help liable. Okay and beneficial lah kepada uh, employer. Kalau tak employer akan rugilah. Dah buat semua contractor dah caw. So siapa nak rectify that particular defect. And then last kali kita akan ada feedback uh, which is uh, legal responsibility response and etc. Okay. Kalau ada. Okay. Okay. So basically untuk this uh, week I akan uh, endkan dekat sini uh, apa ni what we call it sampai slide number 12 dulu uh, by 12 noon. Okay so far ada questions? So far ada questions? So far ada question tak? Oh, Danan tak ada. Semua nak tidur ke nak pergi lunch ni? Uh, Madam. Yes. Madam share slide kat mana you feature? Ha? Huh? Share slide kat mana? I share slide dekat mana? You tak nampak eh slide I? Ah bukan. Yang untuk kita, untuk kita orang. Oh kejap lagi I send dekat si Adam. Ah oh, okay. Ha. Okay. Tapi don't rely on my slide. Dia macam ni sebenarnya I notice uh, uh, since since apa ni since student dah tak tulis tulis ni kan uh, itu yang student ramai yang macam tak boleh nak jawab exam. Uh, tapi I share dengan slide tapi whatever yang I share kalau I explain tu you tulis lah eh. Kan kalau I explain more than that uh, you tulis eh sebab kalau tak nanti you punya notes tu tak complete. Okay, any other question selain pada Sabrina? Yang lain tidur ke? Yang lain masih tidur ke? Sila bangun. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, so basically kalau I give you break, kata kalau next week kita dah start full three hours. So let me know you nak break pada jam berapa and how long. Yes. Buka kamera dulu kejap. Anda tengok semua orang ni ada ke tak? Buka kamera kejap. Switch on the camera sekejap. Ah, Hilwina, Adam, ah, switch on kamera kejap. Siapa tak pakai tudung tu pergi pakai tudung sekarang. Ayo tengok siapa yang tak ada ni. Siapa yang sebenarnya on tapi dia tak ada? 